Welcome everybody to this third online architecture event Bozar organizes in collaboration with A Plus Architecture in Belgium, the privileged partner in crime for Bozar when it comes to architecture. Uh, after the discussions with Rem Colas and Annette Gigon, uh, we are launching today here in Antwerp in this uh, beautiful uh, copyright bookshop, uh, the place for book lovers uh, in architecture to be in Antwerp, also in Ghent by the way. Um, we are launching here today uh, a book, a publication dedicated to the work of Ura Yves Malisse Kiki Verbeek. The book is published uh, by Bozar Books. A plus architecture in Belgium and König Books, uh, and was initially initially uh, supposed to be launched in April 2020, together with the opening of an exhibition in the Center for Fine Arts, an exhibition called Solid Senses, dedicated to the work uh, of Ura. Due to the first lockdown, the exhibition was uh, postponed uh, until November 2020, and due to the second episode of this uh, pandemic, uh, the second lockdown, uh, finally we decided to open the exhibition in November 2021. But since, that, since books and exhibitions have different relations to, to time in a way, and since uh, um, uh, Koenig Books uh, wants to go ahead and print the book and distribute it right away, uh, we decided to launch it today and not to wait for the opening of the exhibition next year. Um, Yves Malisse and Kiki Verbeek are two architects uh, that were trained and that graduated from St. Luke's uh, uh, School for Architecture uh, in Ghent, uh, which is called now the Faculty of Architecture of the KU Leuven. Uh, they both worked abroad in offices like uh, MVRDV or the Office of Metropolitan Architecture in Rotterdam. In 2002, they founded together with Joost Verstraten uh, URA Architects, and uh, in 2010, they uh, continued, both of them, together in what is called URA uh, Yves Malisse Kiki Verbeek. Their work has been nominated and uh, awarded for several uh, prizes, among which the uh, very prestigious uh, Mies van der War, uh, Rohe Award and the Belgian Building Award. They participated in the 35 meter cube uh, uh, series at the single and in Niche Young, architecture, young Belgian Architecture in Bozar. They are the third uh, office to be programmed in the renewed uh, series of monographic architecture shows uh, that A plus brings together with Bozar in the Center for Fine Arts, and um, which we started a couple of years ago with uh, a show on the work of Dierendong Blanke and uh, on Baukunst, the second show, uh, respectively in 2019 and 2020. After having uh, devoted attention to international acclaimed uh, Belgian offices such as Robrecht en Daam, 51N4E, or Office Kirsten Geers David van Severen, this new series of exhibitions uh, has the ambition to show a wide vari variety of approaches uh, which make the actual Belgian uh, uh, architectural lands landscape so fascinating. Uh, normally, and so in the book we, we invited uh, Christophe and to to, uh, to write an essay uh, about the work of Ura Yves Malisse Kiki Verbeek, but and normally he was supposed to be here tonight with us, uh, but unfortunately he fell uh, sick. But uh, for the moment we will go on with a discussion uh, with Kiki and Yves, uh, which uh, will be moderated by uh, Lisa de Visser. Uh, and myself, Lisa de Visser, is uh, the uh, artistic director and chief editor of uh, A Plus Architecture in Belgium. We have also two uh, guests, international guests, uh, zooming in uh, and uh, participating in this uh, discussion. The first of them is Helen Thomas, architect in London, uh, critic and professor at ETH in Zurich. The second is Nicolaus Hirsch, uh, architect, uh, professor as well chief editor of uh, Eflux Architecture and re recently appointed artistic director of SIVA in Brussels. I now give the word to Lisa de Visser. Thank you. Kiki, Eve, we have here a beautiful book in our hands. Finally, it has been published and we are going to 
have a look at this book together and um, to uh, have a look what the different um, aspects are of this book. First of all, I would like to congratulate you with um, not only with the book itself, but also with the variety and the diversity of its content. Because in this book, we not only have something we could expect, a whole series of published buildings, but we also have other items. We have a quite interesting interview with both of you. We have um, a text of Christophe van Gerwey, uh, who commented on your work in general. But we also have two chapters that are very particular, because you were, when you came to us, and when we asked you how uh, your favorite book would look like, you had already quite a clear idea of certain things that you really wanted to put into the book. And one of these ideas was that you wanted to add a new layer, uh, that you wanted to add a certain comprehension of your work, which was not something that was only shown through published projects. And when we were working on the book, this layer took many forms, but at the end, the final form was this atlas. And an atlas, which is what it was called, atlas, but which takes an overview of a lot of different drawings, uh, model photos, uh, plans, and that gives um, an idea of the working methods uh, within your office. Maybe you can tell us a bit more about this. Okay, so um, I think the, the idea of the atlas came from the, the fact that, yeah, um, like you said, uh, we are working now already 20 years, uh, mostly working on uh, projects to be built. And um, we wanted to represent in the book a kind of overview of 20 projects in a way to show it neutrally to the, to the spectators. <coughs> the idea of the, the atlas was really to, to show this, uh, yeah, this white gamma, this white range of uh, design tools that we use in the office. And these uh, tools, they are very uh, variable, they are very uh, open. Um, but we use them in a different ways uh, to accomplish and to yeah, design and to work on our uh, projects. In a way they are uh, free or like uh, separately, but you can also accumulate them and see them in a kind of a open uh, network of ideas. So they, they start to um, yeah, enrich each other and they start to uh, develop into a new kind of uh, yeah, uh, language. I think also that uh, when we got a question to, to have this exhibition, uh, which was of course great to, to have this invitation, first we had to think about how we uh, would arrange our scenography of the exhibition. And this uh, was a very important question for us, how we, how we look to our own architecture. So this, 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 this is like this kind of mirror where, where you have to think how you, how you want to introduce your architecture in a, in, in a, in a general uh, way. And uh, from this, it, 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 it leads us to, to the book, uh, because with the exhibition there was also the book. Um, like Yves said, it was for us immediately very important that each project, once we are builders, eh, we, we make projects, but we, we also want to build them. We, we, we create our own uh, detailing, uh, where we do the thing from A to till Z. Uh, and, um, once a, a project is, is built, it's, it's a, a, a kind of final stage of a, of, of a building. And this is a, a kind of neutrality we wanted to show in, in, in how we show our projects in, 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 in the book. It's the, the plans, like the buildings are, and with pictures of how it's built, or the models if it's in, in a, a going process. But of course, behind that, there is a, a huge, immense of work of analytic design, dissection, uh, how we come to, to subjects, issues we think it's important to the to, to environment or to the program we, we, we want to uh, do research about. And um, by doing this overview, we, we saw a lot of connections between the research we, we, we did uh, for a project from 15 years ago. And then suddenly we said, yeah, this is uh, a very important uh, uh, working issue of uh, our tool, how we develop architecture, that, that it is something which really can be treated as an object on itself. That's why the, the atlas became uh, 
uh, a topic on itself because this is really the, 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 the way of looking and uh, do the research about our projects. Yeah, I think it's also maybe uh, a translation of how we work in our architecture um, that we like to um, oppose things uh, one to another. I like the, the very neutral um, showing of the projects with, uh, like Kiki said, with plans and pictures, uh, quite neutral. And then on the other hand, this quite wide uh, range of, of pictures and, and diagrams and this kind of dialectic between these two. Uh, we like to also experiment that also in the book. How, how does it look in a book? So this uh, autonomous treatment of uh, the atlas inside the, the rest of the book. Something else which is very specific about the book is that uh, you don't ha only have this atlas which adds an additional layer, but also the what you call the triptychs. And I think uh, maybe that's the most clear place where you make a link with the exhibition. The book is not really a catalog, but has this kind of relation of uh, being published at the same time with the supposed, <laughs> public, uh, with the supposed uh, exhibition that had to be opened right now. So. Uh, what is the link between the book and the publication and how did this materialize in the end in these triptychs which uh, if I understood well are also part of the exhibition? So yes indeed uh, the, the triptychs are the parallel between the exhibition and, uh, and, and the book. Uh, they are also uh, they will be visible in, in the exhibition but in, in a really large scale. Uh, and um, like, like we said before, uh, so the projects are, we, we really decided to, to, to show them or, or with um, model pictures or real pictures and then, then the plans. And we on purpose didn't show uh, 3D images or, or um, because this is a, a, a tool which is used a lot of course uh, these days. But we, we strongly believe, since we are really builders, that architecture, it's very difficult for us to, 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 to capture in, in, in one uh, two-dimensional uh, static uh, picture. Uh, and that's why we developed these uh, triptychs, because this makes us thinking in ho how we can represent a project in one image. Uh, by uh, putting a, a triptych, uh, we can make like a syntax of the building, the exterior with the interior. It's like a, dy a dynamic uh, given, uh, which, which uh, translates for us much more uh, the, the, the real uh, core of uh, what the project should be. Yeah, we, we used uh, the pictures of uh, Philippe Dujardin and we, um, yeah, we talked with him and we talked about, yeah, let's we want to make this uh, new image from your images. So we, we, try, we derived a new image from his kind of uh, selection of uh, pictures. And so like Kiki said, it's like a kind of snapshots, uh, snapshots from the projects. It replaces a bit the physical visual experience, of course, of the, of the architecture. But it uh, shows a kind of uh, yeah, one image which shows the, the contents of this one project, uh, what means this project uh, for us. In the preface of the book, uh, Helen Thomas, who is with us this afternoon, wrote that your work could be considered as a, a Gesamtkunstwerk, where every um, part of the building, but also materiality and also a furniture, is contributing to the whole. And when I look at this book and I see this hardcover, I see these three uh, different uh, pieces of paper or, or, or kinds of paper, I see a lot of um, uh, attention to not only graphic design but also from your office the way you have um, uh, drawn the plans and you have uh, guided the whole content of this book I would say this is also a kind of a Gesamtkunstwerk don't you think? Okay, uh, yeah, today we talk about uh, the book um, and this correspondence with the, the exhibition is also of, of course is there but uh, we saw the book also as a kind of autonomous uh, piece of uh, 
yeah, representing our architecture. So in that sense, yes, it's a kind of new way, uh, maybe a project between all the projects that URA is doing, that we saw the book as a project. And in that sense, we, we work together with, uh, very closely with, uh, with all of the people today uh, here in, uh, in the room, but also with uh, the graphic designers, with Juris and Terry uh, Kritis. And I think we, we were enthusiastic as a group. So we, uh, we were talking a lot, we were uh, exchanging books to each other, we, we showed a lot of material and a lot of uh, textures. And, and in that sense, it became this kind of uh, a whole where we were not limited by one piece of paper or one kind of uh, representation, but we, we really assembled it uh, in, in this one book, which is maybe in the end quite thick but has all these different uh, aspects of what a book uh, can, can, can show. And uh, that's what we liked and, and that's uh, quite uh, characteristic for our way of working, yes. Helen, if I'm not mistaken, um, the idea of the Gesamtkunstwerk came from a conversation you had with uh, Kiki and Eve. Um, where did this interpretation of you come from and uh, how do you see this in relation to the book? Well, um, this, this idea of the Gesamtkunstwerk, which I really find interesting, and it's interesting to hear you talk about it in terms of the book, which I'll return to. But when I went to see the sports hall and youth centre that you made in Nazareth, um, and after talking with you, Kiki, um, I find it really interesting to see how the pro what, how you worked there in relation, how you worked in a craft person like relationship with your um, subcontractors because. I, I can see that in uh, in Flanders, in Belgium, it's quite, you know, there's a lot of built systems of construction that you have to work with. And I was really interested in the way that you um, worked with your subcontractors to make the amazing furniture, which I, and which um, made, a, I, I really like the way that you made the spaces within the building through using furniture and joinery. And I, I was really, really impressed about the quality of your relationship, how you managed to get such precise and um, beautiful work out of your subcontractors. I think that's a huge achievement and with something that I found very interesting. Um, yeah, so I mean, that's in a way how my, I'm thinking about the Sam's work. So it was interesting to hear um, Eve talking about the book in that sense, because it links very much to um, the, the especially interesting thing I find, I find about it, which is its clarity combined with its ambiguity. And you were talking about um, how you put it, how you put the book together with all these different papers and parts to it. And that, and which to me makes it like a Gesamtkunstwerk. It has different parts with different characters, but they're all part of the same thing. But that, um, that collection of of actually heterogeneous collection of things within one book. Um, also, they're very clear, but they're also very ambiguous. And, um, and you know, having put together books that are made up of parts, like a, an ensemble of different parts, I find that really interesting. And I guess, you know, in a way, I mean, and, and I stepped in when you were talking about the Atlas which when I was looking at the book, I found quite a mystifying a gift to the reader because it's there, it's in a way very clear, but then in another way, it's very like, why is it there and what is it doing? And, and you know, so it starts me to reflect and contemplate on what the content is there and to really look at it. And I started thinking, are these projects that were maybe unbuilt? No, there are some here that are built. So I started to really move between the different parts of the book to try and you know start to work out the puzzle of it and that made you know that really bound together the different content elements for me um, so that was really interesting so this task and gift to the reader that the ambiguity inherent within the book and I think maybe also is there a deliberate ambiguity I mean in, in your work that, that that requires reflection and working out Oh, well, I'm just interested in, like, this is combination. I know you talk about dialectical images, that you use dialectical what, images or di uh, dialectical relationships. Mm -hmm. um, and so 
for me, this idea of clarity and ambiguity, I mean, they're like, a, they're like dialectical concepts. So the clarity is easy to see that, I mean, even with your, the cover of the book, for example, the book is extremely clear on the cover. It has a diagram. The name of the book says exactly what it is. But then on the other hand, there's an ambiguity about the cover of the book, especially when you turn it over and see the triptych kind of folding onto the back and then that the image is one image and then there's a strange slither at the side. So it's both cl very clear, has a great clarity, but then it's also ambiguous and you don't, you know, as, as you handle the object, you're not quite sure what's going on. <laughs> Maybe that's the, the goal of architecture when, when people or visitors use, use a building you get challenged to, to yeah. use or being intrigued by spaces and that, that's what we think is very important. Uh, it's a question back to, to the users. Yeah. <laughs> the user and the reader, that's right. So the book in that, that way reflects, um, the, the way that you've approached the book reflects your architectural processes and... Indeed, yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Helen, for this beautiful remark and this, this question and this um, reflection about the ambiguity of the book. Um, Nicolas, I was wondering uh, what your uh, questions or reflections are concerning the book. Yeah, I'm really intrigued by your work and by the book, or in other words, the work, how it's presented in the book. But of course, it's clear the, the work, these buildings uh, have a very particular um, yeah, nature, existence. Because um, I'm quite interested in, the, in terms of the topics that are presented there in these projects. There, there's a gymnasium, a refectory, a kindergarten, primary school, youth center, bus station, housing residential care center and others. So I think this shows an image of an architecture that is incredibly involved into um, somehow the good old welfare state or a state that still plays a very important role. I think this is very far away from um, the kind of glossy architecture as we often see um, built for autocrats or um, in the best sense, philanthropists. And um, so in that sense, I think it's, it's really striking to see this actually in the current architectural cost. And I'm quite interested here in this uh, book launch now to, um, to ask you um, about the way how it's presented in the book, because it's a bit as uh, Christoph uh, van Gerwe says, um, it's very silent, the way it's presented, um, almost as, as if there, this, was, this was happening in a, in a society where there are no problems. So this is something he, he says in the beginning, uh, more or less, uh, with my own words. And um, so I think what's, what's interesting for me is how you describe public projects within in, in this book form, in a, which is incredibly coherent, it's a really beautiful book. But it's interesting to me what it doesn't show. And what, because these projects, as we know, have a, an incredible complexity in the making in terms of the users, the clients, etc. So it's, I think it's an interesting example of how um, architects can somehow construct their own methods, et cetera. And this is probably the reference that was brought up earlier in this uh, conversation, uh, the notion of Gesamtkunstwerk, which um, I think it's a, it's a very big word. And I personally wouldn't use it for my own work, I guess, uh, also being an architect who has built a couple of things. And I think that's, that's a bit what, um, what I see in your work, which is um, 
I think in an interesting way excluded or not made explicit in the book is this double potential uh, of architecture, uh, mainly architecture for uh, for the public, as you did, um, which is um, maybe on the one hand an architecture that is a potential for inhabitation for all sorts of different uses. And you really see it also in the details of the photos um, in terms of possibilities of appropriation. And on the other hand, what's, what the book is showing that this is somehow also um, seen as, as an architecture, as a kind of speculation about the world which might be just this microcosm of architecture. But I think this is, to me, something incredibly interesting to see uh, in the book and in your work, that although these, everybody can imagine who, who sees these uh, buildings and the, the photographs, the drawings, when you even think, just think about um, a residential care center, how complex this program is. And it's somehow, when you look in the book, you have a very, it doesn't, it doesn't describe, of course, all these complexities in these programs, but you kind of guess that you as an architect were able to somehow stretch the program, to play with it, to correct it, and to form something out of it. And that's something I, uh, see in in the book as, a, as an interesting um, dialogue between the, somehow book as a container and a particular as a particular typology and on the other hand the complexity of the practice of an architect which maybe is one percent genius uh, ten percent interesting designs and uh, 89 uh, percent bureaucracy and um, fierce debates and fights. So I think this, this is something I'm, I'm really intrigued by. And um, but to a certain extent, I would also like to hear from you how you see your role as architects in the broader social political field, uh, also working that much in, in that very public domain. I don't see it. Um, I don't think we are like deliberately working on uh, like uh, projects for society. But as Kiki uh, told, uh, the role of the architects is building for society. So, in that sense, this wide variety of uh, projects, uh, like we showed twenty in the book, is a kind of a reflection on yeah uh, on how we want to build in this uh, contemporary uh, world. Um, in that sense, it's. There's also a lot of contradictions, I think, in, uh, yeah, in the terms of program and clients and users and all these uh, contradictions or complexities uh, is something we like to work with. And we like to, and we like to work uh, with it to, to kind of give a, an answer to it, a kind of a clear answer to it, a kind of clear identity. Uh, we want to give it to the, to the building so it becomes a representation of a community or a representation of a group of users. And in that sense, we, we like to work on, on a wide uh, variety of, 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 of programs. Uh, but what, what's maybe also an important note is that uh, most of the public buildings we do is gained by competitions. And what is very important in this is that by in a competition, uh, you get first the freedom to, to think about our own, what we want to achieve with this project. And you get a chance and a jury to explain what you want to achieve. And once you get the project, there is already a, a direction that everybody knows. And then it's, 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 it's easier to, to develop this relation in, in, in the way you, you want to uh, evolve. Thank you, Nicolas, for your uh, comments and uh, your question. We have a last question for uh, uh, Kiki and Eve uh, before we wrap up. Um, Kiki and Eve, we, we talked before uh, about the fact that the book was for you uh, another kind of project among, amongst your architecture projects. Uh, and earlier we said also why we, or we gave an indication, why we invited you specifically in this series of uh, architectural offices uh, we invited uh, to, to 
um, take part in this new series of uh, architectural exhibitions and publications we do at the Center for Fine Arts. But uh, fundamentally, why do you uh, accept our, accepted our invitation? Why do you care to make books? You don't need it in a way because you, are, you have a lot of prizes, awards, you're teaching, uh, you have a great career. Uh, what, what do you make a book for? Is it useful for your, your own practice or, or how do you uh, look at this given? Okay, yes. Um, well, I think, uh, of course, we were so happy with the, the question you asked us to, uh, to make a book and to make an exhibition. I think the, the reason why we are here now at this moment, uh, like uh, separate from the exhibition, is also maybe a good moment to, to really reflect on, on the book as a, as, as a project or as a, uh, as a separate uh, element. I think for us, uh, as we said, yeah, we are really intrigued by uh, designing and by building. So we are, um, yeah, I think silently working already 15 years on, uh, on architecture and on a, on a kind of uh, portfolio of uh, different uh, projects. So the moment we were asked by uh, Bozar and A Plus to, to work on, uh, on this uh, exhibition on, uh, on URA and the book, it's for us uh, a reflection. It's just, uh, it's really the, 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 the mirror that you need uh, once in a while. Uh, to reflect on your own work and to, to see um, assimilations or accumulations between the, the different projects and about and then we see there's a, a very uh, a lot of links between the things we do and uh, that shows that we are working as an architect on a very pragmatic base we, we work on analyzing an ana analysis and on uh, dissecting the program but at the same time we were very uh, in intuitively working on, on architecture and, and we, we like to do that and the more we do this, uh, this work, uh, the more we work on an intuitive uh, way on our projects. So in that sense the book is for us uh, yeah, like the perfect mirror uh, after these years to see and look back for a moment but uh, at the same time look forward to, to see in the next uh, 20, 15, 20 years and to see how we can evolve from this, uh, this point of uh, perspective. Thank you, uh, Eve and Kiki, for this uh, answer on this last question with this view on the future that will uh, give us hope in these uh, dark times. And thank you very much for being here and for presenting this book. Thank you as well to uh, Nicolaus Hirsch and uh, Helen Thomas. Thanks to uh, Ivan Strauven and to Bozar for the collaboration. And also thank you very much to Franz König, uh, without whom we could not have uh, edited this book. Um, I hope that uh, you all will enjoy reading this book and uh, know that it's available now here in the copyright bookshop, also on the website of A+. It will also be available as soon as the Koenig bookshop in Bozar will open. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.